Hey everyone, Kieran here. Today I want to make a video to talk about my favorite topic, data art. So if you're not really familiar with the field, I will first start by giving a definition of what is data art and also go, go through one example where we transform a data set into an artistic piece. So first off, let's start with the definition. I would say that data art is an artistic practice that relies on the usage of a data set, it's written in the name, data art, so we have data, uh, to convey emotions and information. So it has a more objective truth behind it and it does not only rely on, on the artist's imagination, right? So if you think about it, a data art piece should also be somewhat understandable by the audience, even if it's not really apparent at first glance. And like I'm talking for my work here, but most of the work that I do is really abstract. So if you don't have like a clear uh, like description below or someone like me explaining it to you, you have no clue. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is if you have the de this description or an explanation, you should be somewhat, you should somewhat understand what's behind the piece. So it is, if you think about this, it's different from data visualization, which uh, aims to be the most effective way of transforming values into visual objects. For instance, bars, points, any visual mark. Data art is not, this, this is not data art. Data art is about first and foremost, emotions. And it's also different from generative art, if you are familiar with the, the field. Uh, generative art, it's a really nice, beautiful field, but it relies, most of the time, it relies on randomness. So you have tons of different noise, Perlin noise, alligator noise, like even if it's created by code, it's, um, it, it tries to emulate what we can find in nature, but it's not necessarily based on the data set uh, that you can extract from your users, from your personal life and so forth. So I would say that data art is in between data visualization and generative art, if we, are, if we had to define it like this. So most data artworks that we have are visual, but data art itself is not limited to a uh, vision. Uh, you can find data art pieces which are actually structured, like sculptures, which we call also data physicalization or parametric sculptures. If you, if you find this in, in Google, you can find different examples. And most of the time they are actually made with the 3D printers. So you try to map numerical values and you need to be very precise. So like the, the width, the height, the different shapes of your structure are actually based on data. So when you look at the piece from different angles, you can recognize and basically the data set tells a story. So this is 3D physical representation of data. But you also have other options. You can encode data in, uh, in music or sound as well. And so this field is known as data sonification, but just a quick word of warning, it's very difficult to do so, to have a quick and clear data sonification. It's very simple. The rules of music that we define as uh, you know agreeable, that we like, that we love, don't necessarily match with the numerical values that you have in your data set. So it's difficult to have a clean artistic data sonification piece. Most of the time it's, you know, created as an experiment, but I would not qualify the data sonification that we have as beautiful. It takes really like a, a good amount of time to, to make it so, and it's really interesting as a field. So what we usually do is we use data sonification in conjunction with other visual elements. And just so you know, most like a large portion of our brain, like here, all the back of your brain is dedicated to vision. And this is one of the most, uh, uh, the, the bigger region of the brain. So it makes sense that most of the things that we have, we try to convey it visually instead of having uh, to hear it, for instance. But, and the last point I wanted to, to make with data sets, you can also encode data set into some other fancy uh, things such as uh, meals, drinks, or even scents. So, but the thing is, our human senses are very poor. So we have a hard time distinguishing between all of the different ingredients that we have. So only a few number of attributes can be represented that way. And if you don't believe me, just take a soup, put five ingredients, or you know exactly the proportion, you know, pepper, vegetables, and so forth. Like mix everything and try to give it to someone and, and ask, uh, that person to give you an, like an exact representation of like an, each element, each element at first, and also like the you know the number, the numerical value that you put in in your soup, right? The number of milliliters of uh, this and this ingredient, 
and it's going to be impossible. So this is just to give you an idea of why we use vision, uh, because it's stronger as a sense than the rest of what we have. So now, uh, just to recap, if, we, if I had to like, give you like a, an outline of data arts, three main things. First, emotion, first and foremost. Second, the message, because we didn't really talk about this, but data art is as art in its name as well. So if it's an art piece, it has to have a message, right? You want to convey something to your audience. And this message is also based, because it is based on data, it is more objective than just my own imagination, but you have to tell a story. It's, there's no data set. If you take a data set, you have to transform it into a story. It's the same thing if you do a data visualization. So here we have common meaning, you have common uh, things between data art and data viz. And at the end, all in all, the goal is to you know, develop the cognition of the audience. So if you look at the piece that you see here, without reading the description, you have no idea what it is. But then if you, maybe you like the colors, maybe you like the shapes, so you want to get closer and you know, understand what's happening here because you know that it's data art. By reading the description here, you want to understand its meaning, uh, have more insights about the, the data set that was used, and hopefully you know, reflect on yourself. And this is like the, the core me, like the core purpose of all art pieces, according to me. But I think it's not like it's a common definition. So, so this is like the art. Now I want to talk about another like a like one example that I did, so you have a clearer idea. Let's talk about this piece. So if you look at this piece, you have no description, you have no idea of what it means. But at the same time, I chose one which is quite figurative. So maybe if you look closer, you see that it, it, it's green and white and it may look like maybe something that is like a plant or a vegetal, right? Something that you can find in the ground. And basically the idea behind this piece was to talk about nature. This piece is, this piece is called Natural Heritage and it was created by, with the collaboration of scientists in, in Switzerland and Lausanne. And basically what they're trying to achieve here as a, as a scientific field is to go up the mountains and try to assess what's, what's happening in the soil. So they go there, they take some soil samples, they, ask, like they look from all the different elements around the soil, uh, maybe they, they also take into account the trees, mushrooms, every, every, anything that is contained in one particular area, and then they move on to the next area, and this is how they basically make a map the whole, uh, the whole ground. It's really interesting as a field of research because they, now that you have data and you can go back a few years later and see whether or not the ecosystem has changed. So it's a nice way to assess you know, the global warming, climate change and so forth and see how the ecosystem actually adapts or not uh, to these constraints. So this is like their, their core scientific uh, study. And my job here was to basically gather all the different uh, samples that they did in like everywhere around the mountain and try to like compact and put everything together in one coherent data set because uh, you have to realize that this was made from different uh, samples, different people. So it was quite uh, difficult to, you know, have everything in one place. Um, for instance, maybe you didn't know that, but the Switzerland has, a, has its own, at, at, at its own uh, cartography system, meaning that um, if you just use a regular lat long coordinates, it will not really cut it for Switzerland because they have so many mountains that they have to account the different types of elevation and they have their own system. So this is just one particular anecdote from uh, this project. So now, okay, we have this data set. How do we create an R piece? So I'm not going to go through all the, like, the design process. This I will cover in, in future videos, but just to, uh, you have to take my word from the, on, the, uh, on, this, on this one, but if you look at the piece now, we, it's annotated with all the different species that we, can, that we found in the soil. So on top, we have all the trees on, in white. And as you go down the plant, you have all the black dots, which are uh, plants. So each node here is a, is a species and they are linked together if they co-appear in the same region, meaning that they live in the same ecosystem. And as we go down the shaft of the plant, you have the insects, the mushroom, and at the bottom, bacteria. And of course, there are just a very small number of bacteria. You can imagine how difficult it would be to categorize uh, everything. So it's just like, there's, there's not even a name for a bacteria. It's just uh, uh, the DNA sample. So this is like how they categorize everything. But what's in interesting here is that we found 1,700 species in this particular, at this particular time. 
connected together by more than 70,000 links. So I would say it's a small data set, but it's really interesting because it represents this particular side of the mountain into them. So this is like, okay, now we have the physical, we, we created a visual artifact and maybe to, to make it as an art piece, we, will, we need to go a bit further and try to maybe have a physical representation of it. So what you would do is maybe you're gonna go to uh, see a printer and this is what we did here. And because it was for an exhibition in the museum, it was a really big print. As you can see, it's more than two meters tall and it was printed on uh, plexiglass to be able to backlight it so that we have this very immersive, uh, almost like a digital screen effect, even though it's just a, uh, it's a, just an image. So we have this, this, this image here, and this is like the final uh, place. It wasn't a museum before, but finally the, the whole, the whole, once the exhibition was over, the piece came back to UNIL, so the University of Lausanne, uh, to be displayed. And as you can notice here, we also have the description behind the piece, uh, just behind me next to the piece. And this is really important. Otherwise, this would just be abstract art and you can like it, it's good, but it's, you, you just, you're losing 50% of the meaning and of the piece. So a data art piece should always have a, a description next to it or a, a video explaining to you uh, what it is. So I hope that you like this, uh, this video. Uh, I'm going to go through all the, the whole process and I, I plan on doing tips and tricks, like programming advices, everything to be able for you to be able to create your own pieces. But I hope that through this video, you have a better idea now of what is data art. And uh, if you have any question, just leave a comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.